Well, good morning and welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. It's about six o'clock right now and uh, Gavin and I are headed to meet Owen for a 3D shoot. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Owen and I have been kind of going back and forth the past four months, kind of talking a little bit, getting a little competitive about who's going to win. And I think Owen thinks he's going to, but I've got other plans today. So we'll be there in about an hour. Uh, going to get the Hoyts to work. And today is the day that Owen goes down. How we doing, big guy? You ready to meet your maker today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hearing this since the summer meeting. You guys are circling me like buzzards. I'm ready. Guess it don't matter the order you shoot them, which one's one, which one's two, but. Center is a 12, outside of that's a 10, eight, and anything in the body's a five, so. So what you're saying is I got the low score right there. That's a 10, so it's not that bad. Just took her a little bit to the right, that's all. Okay. Good. Nice work. First one. How's he gonna do, Owen? 10. I don't even have a 50 yard piece. <laughs> Everybody's on 25, that's good. 10. 10. And then they both got eights. Well guys, as you can see, I'm a little wet. Uh, the thunderstorm snuck in on us. We've completed like 30 out of the 40 uh, total spots on the 3D shoot, but it was a really fun morning. I'm glad Owen invited us out. We had a good time, and uh, unfortunately, we're not 100% sure who the winner is. So I, uh, I had my ideas who was winning, and uh, it wasn't me, it wasn't Gavin, it wasn't Devin. So uh, Owen, nice shooting. But now we're gonna head to Northern Missouri with Tyler Bellman. He's setting up a new property for a deer that they have a good bit of history with. I think the first encounter was back in 2019. His name's Bowser. It's kind of interesting how he got access to this farm as well as the correlation between the farm that he's had the encounters with Bowser in the past. So I'm excited to see how this comes together. Uh, the guys have a lot of history with this deer. Excited to see if they can pull it off this fall and it starts now. So we appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Hey guys, it's the evening of October the 20th and uh, we got an easterly wind today. I'm in here after uh, Big Chief, our homeboy, if they give me an opportunity, I'm definitely not gonna pass it up. Hopefully, some of these shooters will get up on their feet and get to moving early. Two more does just filtered out. You got a nice three-year-old right down here. Two or three-year-old. He's got great potential. Doesn't that eight have a split brow tie?
Hey guys, welcome to the quarry farm. As you guys saw in 2019, Bowser put himself on our radar as he was a really good deer with a lot of potential. And then in 2020 and 2021, he would give us a couple pictures here and there and then again, move off our farm. It wasn't until last year, early October, things really started clicking for us as we had several really good encounters with him and uh, we just couldn't make it happen. Guys, it's October the 6th. Tyler and I are back up here at the main farm and we slipped up in here and did a hanging hunt over these green beans. We're in here after a particular buck we call Bowser. Uh, he's at least a six and a half year old mainframe 10. Just hopefully maybe he decides to come out here and get one more last bite of these green beans. Just had a uh, what looks to be a four or five year old eight pointer feet out in the corner just like we need him to do. Should have a Guys, that's gonna wrap it up for us here as we had a close call this evening. That was the buck we were in here after. He didn't come in at this scrape like he had been doing. He was at 49 yards and I'm just not gonna push it with it the first time being in here and we got that big cold front coming through tonight. So, we regroup, we buy back in here tomorrow evening and hopefully with that cold front, it gets him up on his feet a little earlier and he comes and hits that scrape. Well guys, it's October the 7th, and we're back after that Bowser buck. Uh, me and Tyler did a hanging hunt last night, and we had an encounter with him. He did everything we wanted him to do, except he didn't come hit the scrape tree where we've been getting pictures of him. He fed out and then fed away, so. We had a big cold front move through the area last night. It dropped temperatures down into the 60s, so we're hoping that's gonna be enough to get him on his feet, come hit the scrape like he has been doing. I put myself in a pretty unique situation with two different landowners and uh, they both own adjoining uh, farms here and this is where Bowser's going. You know, they, they do hunt during rifle season. They gave us some in, intel. They had trail cam pictures that this is the location that he was going and we feel like that is a missing puzzle piece for us moving forward. So we're really excited. We're gonna get this farm set up today. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna go pull redneck blind and then we're gonna come back and dive into today's project. I think we'll just go along the edge of this field here, work our way around, put it right in here. I'm 
Need some muscle. Ah. Uh, Justin just got up here to help us and of course we knocked all the work out before he got here but that's part of it we're glad to have his help now but uh, just want to talk about this particular location a little bit uh, we discussed it we're gonna back this wagon and redneck in there um, with the redneck being on a flare box wagon and the ladder at the back of it it kind of creates its own screen and then you back it into four rows of corn and it gives you that much more screen. We'll create the alleyway going out of the back of the, the redneck there, and it'll be a perfect entry and exit for us. But this particular location, um, it's a central point of the farm, northerly wind, east, west wind, not a whole lot of southerly winds will hunt it, but we know that Bowser's coming from the north. So as he transitions down into this area here, um, we feel like this is our best bet on this entire farm to really target this specific deer. And we really wish we had an area like this last year when we was hunting this particular buck. As uh, that encounter I had, I called to him, but we was hunting a bean field, so he didn't have to get down in on us. He was able to skirt around us, whereas this year here with the bottleneck, with the pond, uh, it's going to create a whole different uh, ball game as when we called to him. When he comes into this field, it's going to create a shot opportunity for us. It's a little past five here, and we just had a spike. A doe stepped out on the field there, and I caught movement behind that doe in the timber. And sure enough, it was Bowser. I'm assuming he just fed off, or uh, he's going the other way here right now. But still got a lot of time, so hopefully he comes back into the, this bean field and checks her and makes his way across toward us like that spike just did. Spray some glyphosate on this grass, and then we're going to come back in, burn it down. Hopefully, it'll burn good. And uh, going to drill some oats in with the great plate.
as you guys can tell here behind me, this is why we call this a quarry farm. We got down in here out of the wind today. We were very fortunate enough to have a much needed rain throughout the night last night. And then this, today it's nice and breezy and there's a beautiful day to get out and do some work. Going back to that Bowser deer, you know, today's project was basically surrounding him. Uh, this was a deer that started out on our home farm. And as time went on, uh, the environment of our home farm changed as we have a lot more of an age class and a lot more competition there and we feel like it just moved him off and through that hunt with Justin we kind of picked that up with you know through his demeanor he didn't just come charging into that call he's he's a little more cautious obviously has some age on him and that is why we did what we did today we're going to change our plan slightly you know he gave us a little look there uh, early October last year and now we're going to switch a little bit and hunt him on a food source something that we've never really been able to do before you know, with having this tracks camera out, we start getting some trail cam pictures of him, and then we can hunt him even earlier this year, maybe where he's a little bit more comfortable coming into a nice green source. Uh, there's that big sized pond right inside of that timber, creates that big bottleneck pinch point for us, and we can slide in there without him knowing that we're in there. And uh, hopefully that brings us an opportunity. Hopefully there's gonna be several other targets that use this farm, as it is a very unique farm. Uh, there's a lot of very deep ravines, some mature timber, uh, nice little fingers and draws, real thick grassy areas. This is a beautiful farm. Even though it's only 0.6 miles away from our home farm, it is set up completely different to where everything's kind of centralized here to whereas our main farm, you guys are used to, we kind of dissect, uh, everything's on the outskirts. We come in, in and out, in and out, and dissect it that way. This farm, it has endless opportunities from the front gate all the way back through the entire property. So. We hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know that we're getting excited. We've been talking to the rest of the team. Guys are starting to get their cutty backs out and the velvet pictures are gonna be rolling in pretty quick. I know that I'm excited to continue this chase for Bowser, learning a new farm with an old storyline. It can't get any better than this. As always, we appreciate your guys' support. Thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail and we'll see you next week.